beat him to a bloody pump. I don't talk to cop killers. So now you're selling crack, huh? Right outside the school. I wanted you so much. I find the evidence sufficient to bind the defendant over for trial. Leave me alone! He'll testify. You're gonna have to drag him into court piece by piece. If you're gonna pull that trigger, you better make sure it's right between the eyes. this year to New York City. There was a chill in the air, but I wasn't feeling it. I'd gotten lucky with a 40 to one shot named Black Widow. I was $300 to the good, so I decided to enjoy myself at a little club downtown. There was a tenor sax there that could turn your blood to honey. It's never distraction turned into a not so pleasant one. His name was Eddie Forbes. We used to have something in common. A girl named Sheila. Sheila and I had a good thing going until he offered her a world I could never afford. <laughs> Eddie was a cop. Narcotics undercover. And it looked like he was about to be uncovered in a very painful way. I really wasn't in the mood to help him out, but three against one has never been my favorite odds. Excuse me, pal. This guy is my hate. So now you're selling crack, huh? Right outside the school. Well, you chose the wrong child this time, scum Brady. It was my sister's kid. Hey! You got a beef? Take it outside. With pleasure. Who's Montezuma, the guy with the gold? Victor Ross. He deals like crazy. I was in pretty good. Now I'm out in the cold. Well, you look like you could use some help. Who's trying to burn you? What are you, the question man? OK, Boy Scott, you've done your thing. Thanks. Now beat it. Now, we're not through, Eddie. <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> One last thing. This is for Sheila. This kind of attention I don't need. Don't worry about it. You're not that well known. Hey, today I'm a councilman. Tomorrow the world. What was that all about? Who knows? Business. You know anything else worth arguing about? So now 
now we're a Jane Fonda franchise? Isn't it great? I feel better already. Where did all this stuff come from? 30-day tryout. Then it goes back. By that time, I'll be in shape. You could use some of this yourself, you know. Oh, thanks. Who's the new boyfriend? How'd you know? Psychic. What's the mail? Uh, I haven't had time as soon as I hit five miles. 30 days. Hammer, you're under arrest. What for? The murder of police officer Edward Forbes. Mike, I'm sorry. I didn't have any choice. Yeah. How did he die? Was there an autopsy? Forbes died of massive contusions. Head blows. Not that I think it was deliberate. Massive contusions? Pat, I didn't hit him that hard. Witnesses saw you tear into the guy, Mike. They said you took him on back and beat the hell out of him. Accidental or not, that's where he died. Look. I was in the club. Eddie Forbes was in there, and he was in trouble. Three guys were getting ready to work him over. I jumped in to help him. Well, that was a noble gesture. In order to save your pal, you killed him. You trying to tell me Eddie Forbes wasn't on your hit list for a long time? I admit, I didn't like the guy, but that doesn't mean I killed him. When I left, he was alive. I can't wait for the jury to hear that one. You hated his guts. He stole your girlfriend, and you didn't like that, so you beat him to a bloody pulp. I got it. You're such a big, tough guy, you got to settle everything with your fists. Well, this time you went too far. You hit him too hard, and you're going to pay. You're going to jail. Easy. What have happened to due process? What do you want to do, just hang him right now, get it over with? No, I can wait. Why didn't somebody put some razor blades in his soup? Mike, uh, I'm starting to say something about how it happened. Look, who found the body? Carla Jameson. She owns the club. Okay, now, when I was there, three guys were in that club. Was one of them named Victor Ross? No. She said something about seeing three guys. She didn't know who they were, though. Can you find out? Hey. Look. Mr. Hammer? Yeah. My name is Nancy Holden. I'm representing you. Nothing personal, but you look like you just got out of high school. I guess I should be flattered. But for your information, I've graduated from college and law school with a 3.8 average. 3.8? Uh-huh. When I graduated from high school, 3.8 was imported beer. So what's the game plan, counsel us? Inadequate as it may seem, Mr. Hammer, I managed to reduce your charges from second-degree murder to involuntary manslaughter. Well, that sounds encouraging. I've had your secretary arrange bail. So when do I get out of here? After you. I'll see you at the hearing then. Excuse me, what was your name again? Counsel S. Holden. No, your other name. Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. It'll work out okay, Mike. The only thing that really matters is that you didn't do it. Yeah, I wish you were the judge. Yeah. Thanks. Going back to the office? No, I got something else to do. The last time I saw Sheila was the day she peeled her lingerie off my shower rod. And there was a lot that was left unsaid. I figured the time had come to catch up. Nobody seemed to be at home at Eddie Forbes' apartment. But I thought I'd take a look around the place anyway. What are you doing? I thought someone was trying to kill me. Who? Why? I don't know whoever Eddie's involved with. Sheila, you think I killed Eddie? Pat told me your side of it. If you did it, it was an accident. You ever heard of a guy named Victor Ross? No. Who's he? He was there the night Eddie died. Listen, why would somebody want you out of the way? Eddie told me what he was doing. Oh, rough people. He didn't mention any names. Yesterday, I remember how worried he looked. He said he thought that they were on to him. How does that involve you? Maybe they think I knew what Eddie knew. That's good enough reason to kill me, isn't it? Yeah. Look, uh... 
I never liked Eddie, you know that. But uh, I'm sorry that he's dead. And I'm sorry you got caught up in all this. Well, I'm not going to pretend it was great, especially the last few months. But I didn't want it to be like this. I was dumb, Mike. I came to that point in the road and I took the wrong turn. Hey, I'm not the smartest guy in the world either. I let you go. Sheila. You got a beer? Just a couple of kids playing stickball. You all right? Terrific. You think he'll come back? No, he's halfway to Yonkers by now. Listen, do uh, you know anybody you can stay with? Um, a cousin a couple blocks away. Well, I think it'd be a good idea to pack a bag and stay there for a while. One thing's for sure. There's not a lot to keep me here. There was plenty to keep me. But this wasn't the time to think about old loves. I had bigger problems, like finding a couple of witnesses to what had happened the night Eddie Forbes died, or what didn't happen. Hello? What do you want? Uh, I would like a list of last night's luminaries. Luminaries? Yeah. Board of Health? No, no, no. I I'm with Bernheim. Bernheim Publicity? Yeah, well, that's entrancing, but you're in the wrong place. Well, this is a private office, so if you don't mind... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mrs. Jameson obviously hasn't told you. I've been engaged to publicize the club, newspapers, magazines, you know, and uh, if you could give me a list of last night's reservations, I'll be out of here in a jiffy. How do I know where they keep that junk? Well, how about that? Isn't that lucky? Isn't this it right here under your elbow? Uh, thank you very much. Bernstein and Company thanks you. I thought it was Bernheim. Bernheim, Bernstein, what's the difference? Hi. Hi. Get that thing rolling. I need all the names and addresses you can find. Okay. Nancy's waiting for you. Oh, thanks. So what's up? Barrington. He must be crazy about you. The hearing's been moved up to tomorrow. Tomorrow, huh? He doesn't waste any time. He's good. Yeah? So are you. How do you know? Well, you don't flinch easily. I flinch inside. Hey, everybody flinches inside. The good ones don't show it. In your own funny way, Mr. Hammer, you can be pretty uplifting. Well, thanks. Tomorrow I'll settle for lucky. We arrived at the scene at 2.37 a.m. Officer Edward Forbes was face down. It appeared that his face and head were badly beaten. There was a lot of blood. Well, we refer to your partner, Officer Thomas Crandall, is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you, that'll be all. Officer Thomas Crandall, please take the stand. In other words, you corroborate completely the testimony of your partner, Officer Peggy Ryan. Is that correct? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. You may step down. Ms. Jameson, you discovered the body. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Right after closing up. And earlier, you'd seen Mr. Hammer forcibly remove the victim from the premises? Yes, sir. Mr. Forbes was talking to several men when Mr. Hammer came along and... Uh... Ms. Jameson, you said Mr. Forbes was talking to several men. Do you mean talking or arguing with? Your Honor, I don't mind Miss Jamison responding to that, but I'd like to know what it has to do with this hearing. 
Mr. Barrington has a point, Miss Holden, don't you think? Yes, he does, but since he doesn't mind a response from the witness, perhaps we can have an answer to the question. Talking to or arguing with, Miss Jameson? Just talking, as far as I could see. That's not the point. It's what they were talking about. They were talking about killing him. Your Honor, the defendant is speculating. Agreed. I will ask you to sit down, Mr. Hammer. The court will now take a 20-minute recess. Will the defendant please rise? In the case of the State of New York versus Michael Hammer, I find the evidence sufficient to bind the defendant over for trial. This hearing is closed. Theater here on A and E. Being accused of a murder you didn't commit is no fun. Except to the press. Mr. Hammer, is there? excuse me. Do you need no, to get off, Mr. Hammer? No comment. Excuse me, I need some more. Get out of the post. No comment. How did you know? When is the trial? When is the trial? Mike, it was only a hearing. Right, it's not as though you've been found guilty yet. Give him time. I'll see you later. Nancy, I'm worried. So am I. Officer Ryan? I thought maybe you wanted to talk to me. You thought wrong. That's not the way it looked in court. I don't talk to cop killers. Now, if you don't mind, I'm off duty for a couple of days, and I'm going to start them right now. I see the romance is still flourishing. Yeah, yeah. I got some messages for you. Just let me catch my breath. Uh, oh, let's see. Your landlord called. I know. I talked to him. He wants to know how good my chances are. See if he can get a new tenant and raise the rent. Yeah. Uh, Pat called. Yeah? How'd he sound? I don't know. Uh, he wasn't laughing. Any word about Victor Ross? No. Then the crazy call. Crazy call? Yeah. Peggy Ryan. She was drunk. She wanted to talk to you, and then she hung up. Drunk. Mike, she couldn't put three good words together. I mean, really sloshed. Any idea where she called from? Uh-uh. Don't break that thing. I went to Peggy Ryan's apartment, but nobody was home. So I decided to stop by the one place I was trying to avoid, Murphy's Bar, a local hangout that catered to off-duty police. When a guy walks into Murphy's who might have killed a cop, it's not exactly happy hour. Hey, Kibby. You know Peggy Ryan, don't you? Has she been in today?
He was causing trouble, Captain. Ten seconds more in your report. Now get out of here! Finish! Thanks, pal, but you're a little late. For what? You owe me one hot dog. Listen, I heard you in Murphy's. What do you expect going in there, Mike Hammer Day? You got anything on Victor Ross? I mean it. You mean what? You haven't said anything yet. Hey, a guy with a cloud over his head's pretty stupid going around taunting the cops. No. No what? No, I haven't found anything on Ross, and when I do, I'll let you know, Mike. Until then, do me a favor, stay off the streets, huh? Thanks a lot. For what? For nothing. Yeah, right. Kramer, get a snag up online. Clear. Putting you on report. For what? For achieving the rank of sergeant and being a horse's ass all in the same year. I don't get it, Captain. Who do you think we're running here? Some kind of an SS regiment? Next time you pull a stunt like that, you're on your way to Uganda for patrol duty. Hold on, Captain. I heard what happened in the street, but I didn't have anything to do with it. You don't... had everything to do with it. Those were your boys taking their lead from you. And you stink. Get out of here. I kept telling myself that Peggy Ryan would have to come home sometime. This was my third visit. Peggy could clear me if she wanted to. I was sure of it. For some reason, she was fighting a battle with herself. Only I was the loser. Something you want to tell me, Peggy, now's as good a time as any. Okay. We do it your way, Rambo. You must be feeling pretty rotten. Must be a lot of conscience wrapped around that trigger. All right. All right. Let's try it this way. Go ahead. Do it. Make it two in the same week, Hammer. Peggy. You don't need any more of that. How do you know what I need? Peggy, what are you doing to yourself? You're not even a drinker. <laughs> no kidding. There's about five bars out on Long Island say you're wrong. Don't touch me. I can get up by myself. I want another drink. No, you don't. Now, come on, let's just sit down and talk for a minute. Get it. What, what, what is eating you? Leave me alone! <sighs> Sold out. How so? No choice. I didn't have a choice. Why not? Because I was arrested once. Back in college, a bunch of us for smoking pot. I wanted to be a cop so bad. But it couldn't happen. Not if they knew I, I'd been arrested once. So I didn't tell them. But somebody found out and blackmailed you, right? Who was it? Who's running this operation, Peggy? I don't know. I don't. Look, somebody burned Eddie Forbes. Maybe it was you. No. Well, it wasn't me. You know that. Somebody thought fast, killed him, and put him on my tab. Now, who? I don't know. Well, I think you do. And I think you want to tell me. But you're scared. You want to tell me? Oh, 
Oh, this place stinks, doesn't it? <sighs> Let's talk outside. Easy. A cup of coffee, him. Sure, why not? I think there's a shop over here. It was the same guy with the limp I'd seen outside Sheila's window. Only this time he didn't miss. Officer Peggy Ryan was finally ready to tell the world I didn't kill Eddie Forbes until a sniper's bullet changed her mind. Nothing, Mike. It might have been the same guy who tried to take out Sheila Forbes. Why? The way he moved. He favored his right side when he walked. That's great. All I have to do is put out a dance call for five million males. I admit it's not much to go on. By the way. Hold it right there. Among other things, this man is in violation of the Sullivan Act. How many license has been suspended? Carrying a concealed weapon is a major felony in this state. Hey, this is Piggy Ryan's gun. Mike used it to go after the guy that shot her. Yeah, well, maybe he shot her. I mean, who says there's another assailant? And why are we listening to a man who's already under indictment? All right, all right, I confess. I did it. And you might as well know the rest. I double parked in front of Zabar's last week. Larry. You think he'd shoot her, then call the cops, huh? Besides, we got two witnesses. Well, why didn't you tell me that in the first place? Because you didn't want to hear it, Larry. Miss Ryan, wasn't she the officer uh, in on the Eddie Forbes thing? She and her partner Cranor were the first on the scene. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm starting to smell a big fat conspiracy here. We got Hammer, the girl, Eddie Forbes. I think your departmental investigation is going to pay off like gangbusters. We'll have bank accounts all over the place. Good work. Sorry I fought you on this one. You know, you are hopeless. Where do you think you're going, Hammer? Hey, don't try and leave the city. I'll make a note. If Peggy Ryan knew that I didn't kill Eddie Forbes, what about her partner, Tom Crandall? Did he know it too? Why didn't they say anything in court? Questions make for a long day, especially when you don't have the answers. What happened to the gym? Send it back. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, who needs muscles? What happened? We decided on a trial separation. How long did you know him? Six days. Well, at least you got in shape. Hmm. You know that reservations list you gave me? Yeah. Well, one thing turned up funny. What's that? Alderman Lloyd Carmody. What about him? Well, he was down for a 9 o'clock reservation. But when I checked, his secretary said he couldn't have been there because he had a late dinner at Fabio's that night. So I checked Fabio's. He was never there. Excuse me. You? Yeah, I'd like to see Mr. Carmody. Yes, do you have an appointment? Do I need one? Yes, of course. Uh, would you mind writing something down for me? Um, Mike Hammer, 10.30. I'm sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. Wait! Now that we know each other, I wonder if we can talk. All right, sit down, please. I'm sorry about the troubles you're having. You were at Fabio's restaurant last night, weren't you? Yes, that's, that's right. Nice dinner? Well, uh, very nice. I don't understand what it is. You weren't there, pal. What? You made a reservation, but you never showed up. But you were at the club. <sighs> yes. So why'd you lie? I apologize for that. Oh, come on. What you're gonna hear is selfish, petty. Pretty damn irresponsible. Nobody's perfect. Well, the miserable bottom line of this is that 
I'm running for Congress next year from the 5th District. It's always been a good district to run from. So go on, Congressman. Congressman. I love the sound of that. Huh. So much so that you lied about the club. Not a very good way to launch a political career, is it? That is the point. And I would think somebody like you could understand that. You didn't want to get involved with the murder. That's exactly it. What time did you leave the club? I left about 1.30. Before the body was discovered? It was starting to rain. I went behind the bar, by the alley. Eddie Forbes was still alive. How do you know? He was just getting to his feet. You couldn't have killed him. He was dusting himself off. You knew that and you never said a word? But I didn't know it would come to this. I mean, hearing a trial, I didn't know. But you know now. I'll do whatever has to be done. I'll testify to what I saw. Really? When? Tomorrow morning, if you'd like, anywhere. Can you be at Judge Callie's office at the Municipal Court building at 10.30? I'll be there. So will I. <laughs> At least now, I finally had a witness. Somebody else knew I didn't kill Eddie Forbes. The question was, who did? You. And I'm glad it's you. How'd you get in? I still have your key. Really? I guess I should be flattered. I guess you should. I hope you're hungry. I'm making dinner. Where did I get the blender? I brought it. What happened to your cousin? She has two kids, three canaries, four cats, and her day bed is so hard it keeps me awake all night. Case closed. Like uh, you're moving in. Well, where else was I supposed to go? You could always stay in a hotel. Wow. Well, this is a new side of you. Mike Hammer, the virtuous. I'm not feeling too virtuous right now. What do I do? Let's discuss it over dinner. I think I need a drink. Are you having a bad day? Tell me something. How long were you and Eddie married? We weren't. Legally. I just used his last name to keep things simple. Why didn't you marry him? You. You're a tough act to follow. Things weren't that great anyway. How come? Me? Living on a cop's salary. Remember Sheila? She likes nice things. Yeah. I also remember you saying they weren't that important. They weren't. When I was with you. Now they're important again. That doesn't mean that we can't be friends again, though, does it? Mike, I'm under the Brooklyn Bridge. Brooklyn side. Get over here right away, will you? What's going on? Do you remember Peggy Ryan's partner, Crandall? He's dead. I'm on my way. Theater here on A&E. When a cop is asked to perform hazardous duty, he usually gets more pay. Tom Crandall should have remembered that when he went bad. That's very hazardous duty. And he paid for it with his life. What's going on, Mike? Three cops in three days. Somehow it's all tied in together. Something else ties in, Pat. Crandall and Peggy Ryan. What do you mean? 
Peggy Ryan was being blackmailed. It wasn't much, but it was enough to get her thrown off the force. My hunch is that Crandall was on the take and blackmailed Peggy to go along with him. Ah, that figure's about Crandall, I mean. We checked his bank account, it came up plush. I tracked down Victor Ross. Yeah, what'd you come up it's with? It's not Victor Ross, that was an alias. It's got a record a mile long. No wonder we couldn't find him when it came to the hearing. He's very shy, except when it comes to killing. You figure it was him, he killed all three? Well, he's a common denominator. Eddie Forbes, Peggy Ryan, now Crandall. Not to mention a couple of pot shots at Chino Forbes along the way. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get out an APB. Mike, as far as I'm concerned, you're in the clear. Yeah, well, that's fine, except for one small technicality. I still got that charge hanging over my head. But the good news is that Alderman Carmody is going to take care of that first thing in the morning. Carmody? Yeah, I talked to him this afternoon. He admitted to me that he saw Eddie Forbes alive after I supposedly killed him. Wait a minute, something's crazy here. I just talked to him a little while ago. He said he's leaving town. He wants to lodge a complaint. A complaint? said you've been harassing him. said if you bother him again, he's going to put out a restraining order against you. A restraining order? Well, he's going to need more than a restraining order. He'll testify, even if I have to drag him into court piece by piece. Just the usual cops and robbers stuff. Hey, this looks nice. Ooh, my favorite year. Should I change for dinner? It's almost ready. It smells good. What's the matter? Oh, just a little stiff. Let me see if I can help. Oh, yeah. How's that feel? It feels a lot better. You used to say fantastic. Fantastic. Are you going to keep this on all evening? I thought this was a formal affair. Not this house. You know, that was a strange thing about Eddie. What? He didn't like to be touched. Nothing intimate except just the fundamentals. I'll tell you something else, Mike. When Eddie and I made love, I wasn't even there. Where were you? Years away. I was thinking about you. It didn't start out that way at first. I didn't think about what we were doing. It wasn't important. Two people living together. They share things. They share each other. And then a strange thing happened. I realized I wasn't taking off my things for him. It was for you. And suddenly, everything changed. I began to look forward to it. you. I kept my eyes closed. And when he touched me, it was your hands touching me. I fantasized every inch of my body in your hands. I wanted you so much. So much it made me crazy. waiting for you. I want you, Mike. I want you, Mike.
was there. Ever since I'd been arrested, Betsy was on vacation at the local police department. Fortunately, I kept her little sister on ice. The man with the limp had been at my door. He seemed to want me to follow him. I didn't know where, I didn't know why. But this time, I wasn't gonna let him get away. Pal? It took a little friendly persuasion, but he told me what I wanted to hear. He worked for Victor Ross, a gold chain sleaze who dealt in drugs. Eddie Forbes worked for Ross too, until someone called and let him know that Eddie was a cop. They grabbed Eddie in that club, and when I left, they finished him off. Ross had this guy get rid of Peggy Ryan and Tom Crandall too. Even though they were on the payroll, Ross couldn't count on them staying quiet. He couldn't tell me who fingered Eddie, but Victor Ross could. So I thought I should pay Victor a visit. After all, he was expecting me. Shooting, boys. Wrong target. Mike, what happened? Are you all right? Fine. The door needs a little work, though. Who was it? Did you find out? Well, it was a very educational experience. I found out a lot of things. Starting with why you look so surprised when I walked in just now. What are you talking about? It was a nice piece of business, sweetheart. Ape number one comes to the door, unloads a couple of slugs, and they miss. The fact is, they were supposed to miss. I don't understand. The idea is I follow him to a place where two more gorillas are waiting to kill me. Now, that raises an interesting question. What's the point, Mike? What are you trying to say? Just this. Why did Gorilla Number One go through such an elaborate charade to draw me there? Why not just try and finish me off right here? The answer is simple. You. You're here. That could be embarrassing. Me killed in the same apartment where you spent the night? Particularly since Victor Ross hired you. He knew you were close to Eddie and you could burn him. You figured, what the hell, Eddie's a pain in the neck anyway. Besides, nothing buys nice things so well as lots and lots of money. I didn't know they were going to kill Eddie. Oh, stop it, you're breaking my heart. After everything we said to each other last night, after everything we did, Mike, we can have it all again. Can we? Yes, you've got to believe me.
that chamber's homicide. Once I'd tried to let the memory of Sheila slip away, now finally it would be gone forever. Tonight, Logan and Greavy make a major play to bring down an entire crime empire on Law and Order at 11 Eastern, 12 Pacific. Now, Remington walks into the men's room and gets a big surprise next on A&E.